Many foods have bacteria on them that will be destroyed during the cooking process. It is important that these foods, juicers from these foods, or equipment used to prepare these foods not come into contact with food that has already been cooked or will not be cooked before being served. If contact does occur, then that food will be considered contaminated and can spread foodborne illness to customers. If a cutting board that was used to cut raw chicken was then used to cut lettuce without being sanitized in between, that lettuce would be contaminated with the bacteria of the chicken. If raw meat juices dripped onto cooked food or produce in the refrigerator, it would also be an example of contamination. To reduce the chance of contamination, always keep produce and ready-to-eat foods above and away from raw meat products when stored in a refrigerator or freezer. Food preparation equipment, such as meat slicers, should be disassembled, cleaned, and sanitized whenever switching between slicing raw products and ready-to-eat products. If the same type of item is being sliced throughout the day, the slicer should still be disassembled, cleaned, and sanitized every four hours. If a slicer has food accumulated on it that is over four hours old, that is a major violation. Knives and cutting boards must also be cleaned regularly and stored in a sanitary location to prevent cross-contamination. Containers used for food storage must also be cleaned and sanitized properly before being used. Containers that previously stored any non-food item should not be used for food storage. The key to preventing food contamination is having a good system of cleaning and sanitizing in place. Let's look at how to hand wash dishes in a three compartment sink. If no dishwasher is used or if it breaks down, the three compartment sink can be used for washing all equipment and utensils. In the first compartment of the sink, dishes should be washed in hot soapy water the second compartment should be used to rinse the dishes with warm water. The third compartment should be filled with sanitizer and water at the appropriate concentration. Dishes should be soaked in the sanitizer water and then air dried. Surfaces must also be sanitized regularly. Wiping towels are required to be kept soaking in containers of sanitizer solution whenever they are not in active use. Hot water can also be used and is required to be at or above 180 degrees Fahrenheit to achieve sanitization. Major violations would be noted. If an employee skips the sanitizing step while washing dishes, if a dish machine is being used with no sanitizer, if a high temperature dish machine is not reaching 160 degrees Fahrenheit at the plate, which is 180 degrees Fahrenheit at the manifold, if a surface is observed to be contaminated, to prevent major violations, always check sanitizer levels using a test strip. There are different test strips for checking chlorine and quaternary ammonia concentrations. The test strips should be used daily to check sanitizer concentrations at the three compartment sink, dishwasher, and in sanitizer towel buckets. Having a safe supply of hot and cold running water and plumbing fixtures that are in working order are crucial to running a sanitary food establishment. Major violations would be noted and a red placard would be issued if the water supply has been cut off, the hot water heater isn't working, if surfacing sewage is noted, or if the toilets don't work. When an inspector evaluates the general cleanliness of a facility, they are looking for dirt, grease, and or food buildup resulting from insufficient cleaning practices. If buildup is so severe that food cannot be prepared in a sanitary manner, a major violation will be documented. Infestations of rodents, cockroaches, or other insects such as flies represent a major violation. Live cockroaches or the presence of rodent feces is a major violation. Live cockroaches are evidence of an infestation and the establishment could be closed. If rodent feces are fresh and are located in more than one location, the facility could be closed. Other prevention strategies include keeping all doors and windows closed unless completely screened. There should be no gap around the door greater than a quarter inch. Seal up all food at night and clean up any food debris. Keep floors as dry as possible. Keep glue boards along the walls to monitor for any rodent or insect activity and check them regularly. Any pesticide must be applied by a licensed pest control operator. Decide if the following statements are true or false.
Cross-contamination is when cooked or ready-to-eat food comes into contact with raw, uncooked food that can contain bacteria. True. Food preparation equipment such as meat slicers, cutting boards, and knives don't need to be sanitized when switching from raw products to ready-to-eat products. False. You can make a sanitizing solution by combining chlorine bleach with water or by combining quaternary ammonia and water. When making a bleach sanitizing solution, add a capful of bleach to about one gallon of water. Quaternary ammonia usually comes in a tablet form or as a pink liquid. Read the instructions on the label for dilution standards. <laughs>